Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to another GT Sport opinion piece. In this video we're going to be talking about all sorts of things slipstream. I'm going to give you my reasons and my opinions as to why I think it's GT Sport's biggest problem and I believe even more so than the lack of a collision penalty system. I believe the kind of the way the slipstream is in the game at the moment and how strong it is it leads to so many of the problems that could be avoided just to make a very very small change so over the course of this video we're going to take a look at the history of the slipstream within Gran Turismo Sport because there has been a few changes to the way it works over the years I'll then uh, give you my reasons as to why I think it's such a problem within the game uh, I'll then give you some examples of those problems in action finally we shall then have a little segment where I shall demonstrate the difference between uh, the old strength of a slipstream and the current and why I think we should go back to the old strength and then we'll finish with a little bit of a conclusion. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video enough to then leave a comment after you have watched it. But first off, let's take a look at the history of Slipstream within Gran Turismo Sport. So I started playing GT Sport in March of 2019. Now I have to say, I thought I'd been playing the game a little bit longer than that, but that's when uh, I first seemed to have set a time. Uh, at that time, ironically, the slipstream, I believe, was exactly as we have just now. However, as a new player, just building my way up through the ranks, I never kind of probably understood how much of an issue it was. Now, the first change to the slipstream that came after I started playing the game was in July of 2019 in update 1.41. Uh, the strength of the slipstream remained unchanged, but the distance from which you picked the slipstream up changed from 0.75 of a second all the way up to 1.5 seconds. Now this did cause some consternation within the GT Sport community because picking up that kind of strength of slipstream from 1.5 seconds back was just a little bit too much. Now we did have to deal with that despite all the complaints for around about 7 months. Update 1.57 actually seen a reduction in the strength of the slipstream by around 25 to 33 percent. The distance remained unchanged which did disappoint a lot of people however the change in the strength in my opinion actually made that one of the golden periods of a slipstream within Gran Turismo Sport because you didn't have to defend every single corner, you didn't have to think about defending every single corner eh, as you very often do now if a car is kind of four times, five times behind you. I really enjoyed the slipstream during that period, even though I'd like to have seen the distance change to 0.75 seconds as well. However, that kind of slipstream strength only lasted for four months. Update one point, or sorry, update notice on the 16th of July put the strength of the slipstream back to where it had been when I started playing the game, but they did decrease the distance from 1.5 seconds to 0.75 seconds, and that has remained the slipstream up until this day. Uh, so that was a, a, a sort of update that was quite well received, as we said, because they kind of reduced the distance of the slipstream, but I don't think a lot of people picked up that they actually increased the strength as well. So why is the current slipstream a problem? Number one, it's unrealistic and it's too strong. Self-explanatory, watch any kind of real GT racing and you'll see that they do not pick up the slipstream in any way kind of like the manner that we do in Gran Turismo Sport. Reason number two, it makes drivers think they are much quicker than the car in front. So very often a car will be behind you, they seem to think they're quicker than you, they try to overtake you in every corner, but really all it is is the slipstream making them think they're a lot quicker than the car in front, when in reality it might not even be the case. This also kind of reverses itself because it often means a car that's quicker in front just can't escape from the car that is behind. Number three, probably the biggest one for me, it creates chaotic situations leading to punts and shunts. So because of the strength of the slipstream, very often you can find yourself free wide into a braking zone uh, and obviously then that can lead to, to a lot of uh, accidents and problems if the drivers are a little bit undisciplined in those situations. Slipstream qualified in FIA is probably the biggest reason why I don't play FIA in Europe anymore. And number five, you don't see it too often, but it does happen, and that is weaving on the straights. Drivers know how much important it is to have the slipstream or the slipstream into the car behind, so they weave on the straights to try and break it, which can be really, really annoying. So let's take a look at some examples of those five reasons in action. And number one is just the fact that the slipstream is too strong and unrealistic. So, current daily race, see this week, Autodromo Lago Maggiore, an FT1 in the lead of the race, onto the straight we come. The GTR is behind, pulls out, has 
cleared the other car by halfway down the straight and yeah just absolutely no way for the FT1 to defend you. Now, there is a little bit of a fact that the FT1 is not as quick a car as a GTR and a straight line. So let's take a look at another example, where it's GTR versus GTR. This is actually me behind another GTR. Coming onto the back straight at St. Croix. We get a slightly better run off the corner, but you can see there's just nothing the other GTR can do to defend that. We're a car length ahead by the time we get to the braking zone. It's too strong. It's unrealistic. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of just making overtakes that are just require no skill whatsoever. Next up we've got this impression that a driver behind thinks they're much quicker than the car in front due to the slipstream dragging them along. So again we've got this week's Daily Race C, eh, Group 3 Machinery Autodromo Lago Maggiore. We have an NSX in the lead and it's an FT1 behind. So as we come up the hill here into the final sector you can see the FT1 is all over the NSX in front pausing and poking into every corner. I've come down now towards the last corner. You're going to see that the NSX doesn't exactly get a bad run out of that corner. Slightly worse than the FT1 though. FT1 is going to pick up the slipstream here down in towards turn number one. Not a very long straight here as well but you can see it's one of the ones where the driver has got the kind of slight overrun, feels they have to go for the move. They do make a quite a nice overtake in all fairness but it was one of those ones that kind of require the NSX to realise it was coming. So as we jump on board at the NSX that's just been demoted to second place, you can see here that now the roles are reversed, the FT1 can't escape from the NSX. Now it does look like it is very, very slightly quicker, but the moment we go onto the straight, it loses all that advantage and the NSX is right on the bumper. So it's one of these situations where the driver behind has got the slipstream, thinks they're much quicker than the driver in front, and then can kind of maybe try and force the move when really as a case it is, it's just the slipstream that's making both the drivers stay very close together. Uh, and uh, basically the car in front, even though it might be quicker, just cannot escape, just cannot break that slipstream. So another reason, in my opinion, to maybe reduce the strength. Next up we have the chaotic situation. So this is me and my Aston Martin. Uh, Iron Brew liveried. Come down towards the hairpin. Lago Maggiore once again. Now I had resigned myself to losing one position here to the Beetle, but because of the slipstream, the Porsche has managed to kind of then come in here again. As we go into the braking zone, we're in a bit of an awkward situation of free wide. I have to run really wide, get collected by a Toyota Supra a little bit, which then kind of compromises my speed up the hill. And because of all that, I then lose an actual another three positions. So down to the slipstream in a lot of ways, I lost six positions which I eh, wasn't exactly very pleased with at the time. Let's move on to another situation, Group 3 Machinery at St. Croix. We have a trio of GTRs here. So the GTR at the lead of this group has obviously got no slipstream and they're going to feel the need to go a little bit weavy on the straight. Now weaving is very, very, very annoying I must say. Uh, but I, under I kind of understand why drivers do it. However, it's not really been enough by the time we get to the braking zone We've got three drivers and GTRs all in squabbling over the same piece of track, all going into this corner in completely different lines. And as you can see, we end up with a very kind of bumpery car, messy, messy situation. Yellow GTR goes slightly wide there. This GTR bumps into this one, sends them slightly wide into that corner. We're kind of free wide going into the next sequence of corners as well. This creates messy, messy situations, uh, which could be avoided if the slipstream was just a little bit weaker. Now, slipstream qualifying in FIA, you may well be familiar with scenes like this. So we're at Monza here, and you can see all the cars slowing down into Parabolica. Look at all those cars that are ghosted because they're going so slow. As people want to squabble over uh, positioning in the queue. So I think I can't remember, I can't see what about 12 cars there. That is not the position you want to be in when you're about to go for a fast lap. They're going to compromise each other all the way through the lap. Nobody's going to be able to brake properly. There's going to be bumping. There's going to be slipstreaming. When a qualifying lap, it's just an absolute mess. Again, I think it could be avoided if the slipstream was just reduced a little bit. So yeah, I've kind of said that a couple of times already. My solution for the slipstream is to make it uh, that 25 to 33% weaker like they did after update 1.57, but keep the slipstream at 0.75 seconds distance. So what you just seen there is the current slipstream in action. You can see how easy our uh, car behind there managed to get the slipstream 
and pass we went. Now I have artificially kind of made this look to be what the slipstream was like after update 1.57 so you can immediately see if you look at the delta up in the top right hand corner sorry top yeah top left hand corner get it right Wumble yeah, if you look up there and compare it to the previous one you can see that we have fell much further behind before the race gets underway just because we're not picking up the same amount of slipstream but you can see here even if it was reduced by 25% 33% there's still a lot of pull there, it's still possible to make moves, you would just have to work a little bit harder to get them. Now here's a sort of back to back of uh, the old strength after update 1.57 versus the current strength. You can see what a massive difference it would make. I think it would make a massive difference to the game because drivers would actually have to kind of work on overtakes rather than just kind of always finding themselves just nipping at the heels of other cars into corners and then if they don't quite have that discipline they find themselves going for silly moves, going for silly dives. I call it the two temps syndrome. A lot of drivers get to within two temps of the car behind and feel they have to go for the move. The current slipstream doesn't help uh, prevent that tendency anywhere near as much as it would do if they would just reduce it by that little bit of a margin. So that has been a lot of talk there, hopefully I've not bored you too much. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, would you like to see the slipstream reduced to what I've kind of demonstrated there? Uh, would you think it would improve the racing? A lot of people do say that they don't mind the slipstream because it kind of promotes close racing. They have a point, I can't argue the point that the way the slipstream works means that cars can stay closer together for longer in the race, but yeah I think it Personally, it creates too many chaotic situations where cars just find themselves clustered together in tight groups going at different speeds into tight corners and every driver just has that mentality they want to try and make the move, they've not got any patience, they maybe lack a little bit of discipline and uh, yeah, silly moves get made, punts happen, shunts get uh, go on and I just think with just that slight reduction of the slipstream to what they previously had so we're not we're asking for something to be added to the game it's just something to be changed which you could clearly do as we know after update 1.57 I just think it would avoid those chaotic situations a lot more uh, and I think it would make the racing better because the drivers actually have to be racing against each other it wouldn't just be a lot of opportunism is what goes on at the moment with the slipstream uh, another big one though would be for the FIA qualifying uh, of course there would still be an advantage to be gained but right now with uh, the slipstream an FIA can maybe gain around about four to five tenths of a second if you sort of time the slipstream well. With the reductions I am suggesting there would of course still be an advantage to be gained but it would be more like in the sort of region of two to three tenths and it would be a lot more risky to go for it because you would have to be very close to the car in front to sort of gain that maximum benefit. If that car then starts making mistakes or starts holding you up then it just wouldn't be worth it. I think you'd see a lot more drivers just not taking that risk uh, as it is. The gain that you can get from slipstream qualifying means that a lot of drivers feel inclined to go for it. Anyway, we have babbled on enough here. Let me know what you think. Do you think the slipstream's too strong? Would you like to see what I've suggested implemented? Do you think the slipstream's absolutely fine? I know there is a lot of people out there who think it's absolutely fine. Uh, do you disagree that it's not as big a problem? Uh, as the lack of a penalty system. I think a lot of people probably will disagree with me on that one. So let me know your opinions in the comments section. However, we are going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it to this point, do hit that like button. Do like that, like that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.